Hey, so how did you pass your solutions architect exam? Sure, let me show you. So a few things first. It took me almost 25 to 30 days to prepare for the exam. I paid $75 USD because I had the cloud practitioner exam. So you get a 50% discount for your next exam. And then also I had been working with AWS for over a year before setting the exam. So I think the preparation time will depend on that. So I was using AWS day to day for a year before I sat the AWS Solutions Architect exam. So yeah, those were a few things that I wanted to go over before we jump into the resources that I wanna share. Jumping into the exam guide here, so we have the AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam and I think it has been revised now from what I sat in 2020. And going over the overview of the exam, so you need one year's hands-on experience with AWS as per their suggestion. Uh, experience deploying, managing, and operating workloads on AWS as well as implementing security controls. Familiarity with using both AWS management console and also the CLI, and also understanding the well-architected framework, AWS networking, security services, and the, just the global infrastructure of AWS. Also, you should be able to identify which AWS service meets the technical requirement and to define technical requirements for an AWS-based application. So now the code has changed. I believe it was CO1. Now it's SAACO2, which basically means it has been revised. So for the course recommendation that I have is Stefan Marek's Ultimate AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate 2022. So this has also been revised. And I think Stefan, as in just in general, he's a great teacher. I've taken his courses, Cloud Practitioner, and then I also did the Solutions Architect and Developer Associate one too. If you don't want to buy a course, I would suggest Free Code Camps AWS Certified Solution Architect. But again, this is not revised, I think, and I'm, I'm not sure when Andrew is coming with an update. But yeah, uh, it's a great resource. I've used it. I've used several other courses from Free Code Camp in the past. So that covers your course. And I also had a Cloud Gurus membership, and this was through work, where I could do some labs using their environment. So they give you a sandbox environment and I utilize that to do my labs. Uh, so either you can use free tier. Stefan's course has a lot of labs. So either you can use free tier or you can opt in for a sandbox environment through a Cloud Guru. I don't know if, I think Cloud Academy does that too. But again, it's just preference. And since I was provided through work, I didn't really care because it was paid by the company, right? Next thing I would highly recommend is the well-architected framework white paper. So this is really important. Like I know it's hard for me. I'm okay with it because I love writing. So <laughs> I've built the habit of reading and I know it can get boring for certain people and certain people would prefer video based content rather than like written or reading based content. So I would say just go through it. I will give you really deep understanding of how you architect different, how you pick basically tech stacks when you're architecting a solution. The other ones is the FAQs. So go through all of these. Um, I know they have RDS and SQS. I didn't go through them. Uh, for me, it was just AWS S3 or Amazon S3 FAQs, EC2 FAQs, VPC and network or load balancing FAQs, and then also Route 53. So those are the four FAQs that I went through. Again, the exam has been revised, so make sure you go through all five or six of them. Yep, six of them. And the white paper is the AWS Well Architecture Framework. The links will be in the description just so that it's easy for you to find them. But yeah, uh, the exam itself costed $150 in US 
And since I had AWS Cloud Practitioner, I had a 50% discount. I would highly recommend if you have not given your AWS Cloud Practitioner, you would get 50% off on your next exam, but also it'll give you an understanding of how the exam is, or like how AWS exam is, especially for me, it was a challenge because I was giving it remote. So giving the Cloud Practitioner, I kind of knew what I could expect um, from the method of how exams are given in cloud or certifications, right? So yeah, I would say sit your cloud practitioner and get that 50% off for your solutions architect exam. And then I've also published my personal notes and you can see here AWS Solutions Architect Associate. Um, again, since I gave the older version, there might be a few changes that I need to put in here, but nonetheless, I think it like it still covers a lot of the topics that will that are on the exam. So yeah, just go through them on your like when you're revising for your exam, maybe two three days before. Moving on to the practice exams, I recommend Tutorial Dojos or John Bonsos. Hopefully, I'm not butchering his name, but you can you can Google his practice exams. So I highly recommend these practice exams. Uh, there is a set of six practice exams that you can take and the price is not so bad. You can buy them through Tutorial Dojo site too. So after going through the course material and reading those white papers, do set these, see how you score on them. I would say when you are at 85 to 90% uh, mark on these exams, go set your exam, you'll be fine. Uh, these practice exams are really good. But yeah, that covers kind of my preparation on how I did the AWS Solutions Architect. If you're taking the exam soon, I want to wish you good luck and hopefully you'll pass it. Feel free to share it on Twitter and tag me that I passed my AWS Solutions Architect or LinkedIn. It'll just make me happy. I hope this video helped you and I'll see you in the next one.